Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, here. Amen. Get ready. All this technology, we get ready. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. We're going places, y'all. We got to get ready. We got to get we get ready. We need to be ready. You ready? Yes. Come on, let's get ready for some love. She comes to bring the word of God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm so excited to be doing this tonight. God is good. <laughs> and I just want to thank my family and my friends for being here. Right. I can't even tell you how much it means to me that you all are here. Um, I'm not going to get messed up right now. <laughs> But I thank God for you. Um, and I thank God for everyone here tonight because tonight really represents uh, somebody who has finally stopped running from their calling. <laughs> That's why I'm standing here right now. I have finally stopped running. That's <laughs> good. So I'm so grateful to God that He never gave up on me. <laughs> and I'm just grateful to share the love that he has just been saturating me with and just share it with you all because he loves us so much Amen. and everything that he's been pouring into me for tonight is just really about his love for every one of us that's what it's all about um, so for the past month or so we've received like really great teachings from the whole team here about prayer and so Pastor Mark asked us to continue and build with prayer and the prophetic. So <laughs> I was just like, okay, I don't know if he knew what he was doing because this is like <laughs> one of my favorite things in the world to talk about. And I'm like, mm, okay, like, uh, I hope y'all are in. <laughs> I hope y'all are ready for a long night now. <laughs> <laughs> But the reason I love this topic so much is because I had a serious breakthrough in my life around this because I grew up just feeling so insecure about um, communicating with God and being able to hear from God and feeling like, you know, how come, you know, this one and that one, they seem like they're Jesus' best friend and I'm over here somewhere. And <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Easter is one of them. I was thinking about her <laughs> when I was uh, preparing. I didn't even know she was going to be here tonight. But, um, you know, she's just always one of those people to me that seemed like, okay, why is she like Jesus' best friend? <laughs> like, they just here. Like, you know, like, wow. like, and just feeling like I could never be like that with God. Like, it was just too hard, too much, it would require too much, I could never be that good. And I've had a major breakthrough in my life that I can be Jesus' best friend. <laughs> we can all be. You can be his best friend, you can be his best friend, we all can be his best friend. Because he wants to talk to each and every one of us in a very personal and intimate way. And I had to allow him to just remove all those things that I had kind of picked up throughout my life that told me that I wasn't good enough, that I was rejected, that I was too weird, that I was too this, I was too that. Um, I was not acceptable. That my thoughts just were repulsive to God. You know, I used to feel like God must really be mad at me like all the time. Because my thoughts are out of control. Like, my desires are out of control. Like, why would God even want to deal with me? That's how I felt most of my life. And so, because of that, I kind of wavered. Like, you know, I'd be on fire for him, and then I'd be on fire for some dude. You know, it would just be back and forth like that. And I just finally decided enough. You know, I'm just surrendered finally <laughs> and it's so good like I shared with um, you all here at the hope that um, three years ago God told me to come here and and serve and be trained and I knew I was supposed to be here he gave me three different dreams telling me that 
And still, I'm like running all over New Jersey trying to find a church to be. Why? Why? Because I knew to be in a house like this, you can't run. You cannot hide in a place where the Spirit of God is. Okay? <laughs> where people actually hear from God, the spotlight is on. Like, you can't hide in a place like this. So I ran. <laughs> But I'm thankful God didn't give up on me. I'm thankful Pastor Mark let me in the door. <laughs> After all my back and forth. So I'm just grateful. <laughs> so what is prophecy? So I found a definition that said it's accurately describing or predicting what will happen in the future. And then there's often like, there's all these spiritual gifts that we often lump into that category of prophecy. And they're in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discernment, faith, healing, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. So that's why I'm like, there's, this is such a rich subject. Yes. Um, but there's really like a, a strong focus that God gave me for tonight. And Really, what we want to understand tonight is God wants us to hear, see, speak, and align ourselves with what He's saying and what He's doing. First uh -huh. Corinthians fourteen one says, "Follow the way of love, and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy." So, if you're connected to this house, you know that. There's, that's the assignment of the hope, is to train people in prayer and the prophetic, hearing God, cultivating our relationship with God. That is literally the assignment of this house. So you're in a good place, and I will venture to say, if you're called to be here, that you are a leader, because there's also a place for leaders to be trained. So if this is your house of worship, and if you feel drawn here, it's because you are a leader, and because God really wants to cultivate your ability to prophesy and to walk with him. All right. So, we're all born with gifts. That's the other thing. That's the other lie that we kind of, sometimes we feel like, okay, you know, this one has that, this one can do that. What do I have? We're all born with gifts. And then we can desire other gifts. Like there may be things that may not have come naturally to us when we were born, but we can say, God, I want that. And he will honor that. If we press in and pursue him, he will honor that. So my family is uh, prophetic. Like we dream, <laughs> we see things that will happen in real life in our dreams. <laughs> We're sensitive to um, the spirit and sensitive to people. And I know throughout my life I've seen like visions, I've heard phrases you know, word pictures and things like that. And growing up, I didn't understand really what to do with that. And at times it felt like I was going crazy because I'm like, what are all these things swirling around my head? But, um, you know, I was going through one of the most difficult challenges of my life. Um, about five years ago, it started and God just really began to cultivate my prayer life. And I began to understand, like, wow, I really can have a close relationship with him, and I can hear him. So um, kind of the question that I had throughout my life and the title of my message tonight is, God, is that you? <laughs> God, is that you? So he really wants us to know that he's speaking, and he wants us to have a relationship with, with him. So why is it important to hear God? Um, one, to proclaim his will. You know, we need to be able to say, okay, this is the will of God. These are his plans. Because he has great plans for us, great plans for his kingdom, great plans for his people. And he needs us to speak and proclaim those plans. And, you know, if we receive a message like that, it could actually change our own life or someone else's life. And I experienced that... Um, I think it was about 13 years ago. And uh, <laughs> I was at a meeting. Pastor Mark was there. My mom was there. John Paul Jackson, um, well-known prophet, was there. Easter, you probably there. <laughs> so, 
Um, he was given a, a corporate word to the church. And at the end, he began to prophesy to a few people, and I was one of them. And at that time, I was barely even trying to serve God. I was a mess. And it's like, I, if I even had one foot in the church, <laughs> you know, I had definitely had one foot out. And I, didn't, I was trying to decide, okay, what am I doing with myself? But I knew I needed something. And this man called me out, and he said, you are the lady with the golden lips and the golden throat. And he's like, that means you will teach the things of God to people in a non-religious way. And he didn't know, barely anybody knew, that from the time I was a child, I dreamt of doing just that. I dreamt of ministering, but I just never thought I could do it. So for this perfect stranger to show up and say that, I'm sitting there like, what? <laughs> And I'm literally like, well, how is that going to happen? Because my life didn't look like that at all. And I'm like, how in the world is that going to happen? And I'm literally thinking this, and the man is like, don't worry how it's going to happen. God is going to help you. And he's like way up there. I'm sitting like, far, you know. And he's like, don't worry how it's going to happen. God is going to help you. So I'm like, whoa, okay. Wow. <laughs> so needless to say, that was a transformational moment for me because it showed me God loved me and he saw yes. me. Yes. And he never gave up on me. Yes. Amen. As much as I just wouldn't commit and wouldn't be faithful to him, he was faithful to me. Yes. Amen. That was wow. So, you know, I always kept this prayer life with God, even with my wavering. I always had this, this thing where I could still talk to God. And I think that really saved me. A lot of times and so I share that because God can give us something for someone else and you may not even realize it but it could change their life it could save their life you don't know what people are dealing with like it's like we know how to look like we have it all together okay <laughs> we know how to look like everything is just fine and we're secretly like somebody please help me yes Please, yes. but we don't speak up. We don't show it on the outside. We're strong. You know? We're showing everybody that we're strong, but we need help. Yes. So it's important that we hear God That's it. That's true. because somebody needs you. Somebody needs that connection. So that's another reason why we have to hear God is to encourage others. Yes. You know, God will put someone on your heart reach out to them. Yes. If somebody just randomly pops into your head, just say, send them a text. That's right. Hey, Amen. how are you? Right. You don't know. They could be falling apart at that very moment. That's and right. that's why they're on your heart. Yeah. That's happened to me several times. I'm like laying on the floor crying and somebody's like, hey, Rachel, you're on my mind. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> that's so life-giving. Yes, yes, yes. And we have the ability to do that. And in fact, we, we, we're supposed to do that. Um, another reason to, to hear God and to prophesy. Sometimes we have to bring change, correction, or warning. And, you know, God says, you know, what parent who loves your child doesn't discipline your child? Sometimes correction is necessary. Sometimes we got to fix it, you know. And somebody has to speak up. <laughs> it's not the easiest spot to be in, but somebody has to bring that correction word. Or somebody has to bring that warning. You know, I was part of a leadership team once where um, somebody came in and all these alarms and signals were going off. I'm like, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. But again, I'm thinking, who am I? You know, who am I? So I didn't say anything. Our founder embraced this person with open arms, so I'm like, let me, I, I need to do it too. Who am I? I need to fall upon. So I did, and then time went by, and this person just started just controlling people, manipulating people, getting money from people, and then just started building their own ministry, taking people with them. And so much heartbreak was caused. And when I saw what happened, I, I wept bitterly, because I'm just like, oh my God, like, I didn't say anything. 
And I'm like, never again. Never again. Uh, if, if I'm not sure, if I think I'm out of line, God, is that you? Am I hearing you right? Show me. I'm not just going to dismiss it and say, oh, no, I'm, they know better than I do. I have to check with God because if I'm disobedient. I have to. I have to, you know, press into that. And there's so many times, like, God is, you know, God is really giving me dreams, visions, and different things like that to warn me, you know, about my relationships or, or things that I was trying to do. And he's like, no, that's, that's not what I have for you right now. So another reason is for clarity, instruction, and guidance. And this is so important to just know that um, God has us. You know, sometimes we need those reminders of his plans. Sometimes we want to be able to see all the details. Like, can I just know how this is going to pan out? And we may not get all of that, but he will give us something, especially when we take the first step that he gave us. You know, sometimes he'll say, do this, and we're waiting for the rest of the steps. We have to take that first step. <laughs> and then the rest of the steps will be revealed. So I'll talk more about this, but um, a funny story is like one day. So I'm like growing in my ability to hear God. And so um, some guy, I guess he thought he liked me or whatever. And he tried to run a line. And he said, I've been thinking about you all day. And I was like, Psh, you've been thinking about Jackie. <laughs> He was like, how do you know Jackie? <laughs> so I thought it was hilarious. Like, I was just like, see. Uh, yeah, so he had just been with Jackie talking about he was seeing, he was thinking about me all day. I'm like, mm-hmm. So thank you, God, for dodging that bullet. <laughs> so that was just kind of like a funny way that God just was like, you hear me, you know? That was like God is really funny. Like my sister knows, I'm I'm goofy. Um, I love to laugh, and and God is funny. Like I mean, God created everything. He created humor. So why wouldn't He have jokes? He has jokes. So I felt like that was a joke that He gave me to show me. Yes, you do hear me clearly. You know, I got a name. You know? <laughs> so um, it, it's just been fun getting to know God in in a deeper way. So I really want to just continue to, to share some things with you that help me grow my ability to hear God. Um, just going from someone who was always tossed back and forth by my emotions, just always anxious, um, to becoming someone who can take that to God and then just get clear steps of how to move forward instead of just being stuck in an emotional place. All right. So I want to share with you, I think it's four things. Three things. Three things to help you hear God clearly. So I know like we have we have some like amazing, like Pastor Mark said, generals in the house. There's people at different levels of their walk with God. Um, <laughs> and I appreciate you guys because I, I learned from everybody. And um, actually like so I was coming to the hope like a long time ago, 13, 14, 15, I don't know. <laughs> and um, another time in my life where I'm just, I was, it was around the same time as John Paul Jackson word, and um, you know, just needing prayer. And you know, so many people prayed for me then, Pastor Faye, oh my gosh, holding me up. Um, they're so thankful for Jewel connecting me with this ministry because it was exactly what I needed then and now. And um, <laughs> why do you see? It's going to be a messy one. Right? <laughs> so, um, so a major way that the hope helped me was to learn how to pray with confidence and pray often. That is a key to being able to hear God clearly. You have to pray with confidence and pray often. Okay, so the confidence comes in in just releasing what Pastor Mark was talking about earlier. You don't have to pray like anybody else. Uh -huh. And I was so like, oh my gosh, like I, can't, I don't talk like that. Like people be so eloquent and just so smooth with it. And I'm like, <laughs> I sound like a dork. Like I'm like, I don't, 
I don't know how to talk to God. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, do, do you even want to hear me right now? Like, you know, <laughs> I would be so confused. Like, God is not trying to hear me. But what I learned from being connected to the Holy Spirit, so I said, this is an awesome training ground to pray and to learn how to hear God. Um, is that it's not about anybody else. It's really personal. You and God. He He formed you. He created you. He knows your personality. And he actually loves you as an individual. He enjoys us. He enjoys those little unique, quirky things about us. So you can go to him like, I'll be like, yo, God, do you know what just happened to me? Of course he knows, but... He wants us to talk to him in the way that we talk. So that's where the confidence comes in. Just knowing he wants to hear you. No matter what it sounds like. Okay? <laughs> and do it often. Do it often. So um, it was funny because when I was a kid, my grandmother and my, my dad's mother, <laughs> she made me memorize the Lord's Prayer. And I'm like, why do I have to do this? And not knowing that it was going to come in handy later on. But, you know, she made me memorize the Lord's Prayer. So whoever says it, just say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So that's awesome. Like that's literally like Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, right? So what I got from that is there is a structure to this. Not that we have to say those words because who talks like that? None, none of us talk like that. But there's a structure to it. So what I got was like there's seven elements that I saw in this prayer. And the first is praise God for who he is. Yes. And then second, we want to ask him to establish his will on earth. Like, God, we want your will. We want your plans. Yes. And then third... Acknowledging him as our provider. Fourth, asking him for forgiveness and releasing those who have sinned against us. Number four is asking for forgiveness and releasing those who have sinned against us. Number five, this is one I probably wear him out with. <laughs> Ask him to help you escape temptation and deliver you from evil. And then, number six, you want to worship him as the king who reigns in power and glory. And then you simply seal it with your agreement. Amen. So just knowing that those are the parts of prayer that Jesus was teaching the disciples. I mean, what greater teacher to go to than Jesus? He's like, here's how you pray. Those are the elements of prayer. So we can say it however we want to say it, but we know if we do that, Jesus already said, Here, here's, here's how to do it. You can't go wrong with that. And then another thing I noticed in the Word of God is we must always worship and give thanks. How many times the Bible does it say, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise? And really, we should live with gratitude. And we have so much to be thankful for. So I don't go to him without saying thank you, Father. Like Psalm 100, verse 4. 
Psalm 107, verse 1. Psalm 116, verse 17. Psalm 136, verse 1. They all say, come to him with thanksgiving. And then, one thing I took note of, Jesus, when he was doing, uh, when he was feeding the multitude with the, the five loaves and two fish, even he thanked God first. Yes. <laughs> he thanked God for the provision of those five little pieces of bread and two fish. He thanked God for it and then distributed it. So if Jesus can start out with thanks, okay, right? Amen. Bring it down. Thank you, Lord. So you want to find you you want to also find scripture related to what you're praying for, and you want to submit your concerns to God. There's so much here, like I can't even go into it because there's something so important that God wants us to get from Him tonight. And you want to make sure you silence yourself and listen. You know, it's a two-way conversation, so you can't just be like, God, I need this, I want this. Help me with this, and then don't spend the time to hear what he has to say. So then, I just want to mention some things that I feel like are accelerators to hearing him. And I will use these in a heartbeat, especially like if I urgently need to hear him about something. So one, you pray in spirit, use your heavenly language. And I'm just going to give the scripture reference because I got to keep moving here. Jude 20 through 21. Fasting opens the channels to be able to hear God. Isaiah 58. Um, that's a very interesting passage to me because God actually provides a contrast between proper fasting and people who fast just for show or to be able to say they did. <laughs> so that's a good one to take a look at. The power of agreement. This is my favorite. I think I'm addicted to this one. So, <laughs> the power of agreement. Matthew 18, 20 says, where two or three are gathered in my midst, there I am. And so you know, if you can get someone to pray with you, God is right there. And then Job 42, 10. After Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortune and gave him twice as much as he had before. <laughs> so I love partnering with people in prayer. Like I, I just go in and out of prayer seasons with people partnering in prayer, and we see so many things happen. Like it's just amazing, you know, the confirmations, the answers of prayer that we get through doing. So that was the first point of hearing God: praying confidently, praying often. The second point to hear God: we want to walk in purity. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. And this is the part where I always felt like, okay, I would never be able to hear from God because I can't be that good. Like, I just can't. <laughs> but God does not expect us to be good in and of our own effort. Amen. This is something that happens as we walk with him. Our thoughts become more like his and our actions become more like his through our relationship. It's not because we wake up one morning and say, I'm going to do everything right. And that does it. No. It's through our relationship with God. He does it. He transforms us. Because it's his glory. It's not, oh, Rachel was so great that now this, that, and the third. No. God is the only one who's perfect. God is holy. <laughs> so we need him to transform us. So I had to release that to him and, and even release the guilt and the shame associated with the fact that I just can't be that good. And the shame is what would keep me from going to him or make me feel like I was separated from him. We're not separated from him. We're not separated. Never let your struggles or your weaknesses or what you feel like is just not right about you. Never let that separate you from God. That is not his heart for us. And that's such a deception that you have to be like this. You have to look like this. You have to act like this. No. God is always saying, come here. Come to me. He's always inviting us in. Always. That's like, whew. That is the breakthrough of my life. 
that he always wants us So the third thing, there's a bunch of scriptures for that, but I don't really want to keep going. Walk in love. Woo, I, I love this. You can't be ugly, hateful, and judgmental and expect to hear from God. You just can't. That is not God. You can't be ugly, hateful, and judgmental and expect to walk with God. God is love. He is love. <laughs> Woo. 1 Corinthians 13 If I speak in the tongues of men or angels But do not have love I am a resounding gong Or a clanging cymbal That says If you don't have love you're a bunch of noise This is in the Bible okay? If I have the gift of prophecy And can fathom all mysteries and knowledge And if I have faith that can move mountains But do not have love I am nothing yes. how important is that Very. <laughs> you mean to tell me I can move a mountain but if I'm not walking in love I'm nothing that's, it. that's a strong point <laughs> that's something we can't ignore we must walk in love we can't claim to know God if we can't walk in love that's right Because he is love. Amen. So, I just want to quickly give you like some checkpoints to start to know if you're hearing God. Like if you're doubting, like, do I hear God? I don't know. Here's some, some indicators. This is not like, you know, it's not a full list. It's not everything. I'm still learning. Um, but these are some things that have helped me. How to know God is that you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. How do you know God is that you? So is what you're hearing in line with God's word? He's not going to contradict his word. He's just, he's not going to do it. <laughs> is what you're hearing coming from a foundation of love or fear? Sometimes we're like, oh, I think I need to do this. And if we really think about it, we want to do that because we're afraid to do the big thing the big plan, whatever it is that's really in our heart to do. 